G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Gaijin have recently published some planned battle rating changes for July 2021, and today I thought it would be a productive exercise to go over those changes, talk about the ones that are potentially beneficial to the game, those that are potentially detrimental to the game, and sort of exploring the philosophy as to why I think Gaijin does these things, as well as providing my own potential philosophy or potential uh, MO modus operandum to uh, deal with these particular types of balance issues. Today we're going to specifically be looking at the aircraft in the RB section because that's primarily what I play and that's primarily what you guys probably come to the channel for. As for the other planes, I am sure that there are plenty of people that cover um, ground and sim and those types of things so maybe you can go and have a look at those guys. Anyway, before we actually dive into the battle ratings themselves, I wanted to discuss a couple of things about battle ratings themselves. First of all, you might know me for basically talking a lot about all of these battle rating changes. Every time there's a new change, I'm always making a video on it, and that's because I'm very invested in the game. I have a lot of hours in this game, I have a YouTube channel revolving around this game, and therefore, if I see something that is uh, a little bit amiss or awry, I want to make sure that that is either rectified, addressed, or uh, is less of a problem than maybe I made it out to be, or maybe I believed it to be originally. And so, I am one of those people to make videos like this because of my investment in this game. Not necessarily a financial investment, more an emotional investment because the YouTube channel is is massive at this point compared to what it used to be. Thank you guys for subscribing, by the way. So with that out of the way, I'd also like to just talk about what I think a battle rating means. So a battle rating to me is like a numeric value for the performance level of a plane, as in its potential capabilities. And for me, having a plane at having two planes at the same battle rating means that they are very, very close if not identical in performance or performing in ways that are sort of complementary or um, supplementary to each other. For example, the F4E and the MiG-21 BIS, in my opinion, are extremely close in their levels of performance. One of them has extremely good radar capabilities and extremely long-range radar combat. The other one has extremely good performance and extremely good turning circles. It also has deadly dogfight missiles, if you will, and the F4E is more sort of geared towards that higher altitude or, alternatively, energy-type fighting combat. So the way that these two planes interact with each other on the battlefield is sort of complementary. One performs one thing better and the other performs it worse. It's the way that it should be, to be honest. And for me, having multiple aircraft in this game, thousands, hundreds and thousands, or, or not hundreds and thousands, but hundreds, nearly thousands of aircraft and tanks and ships in this game, it does become hard to balance. And so if I can point out a couple of errors here and there, then I think that it is worth talking about and at least worth discussing. So without further ado, let's actually get into these changes. So the first one to point out is the Spitfire F Mark 22 going from 6.3 or all, all the way, well not all the way, but up to 6.7. Now, personally, I can see where this comes from because the Spitfire Mark 22 is extremely powerful. Looking at the sort of down tiers that it may potentially face, a 6.3 all the way down to 5.3 is extremely deadly. The Spitfire Mark 22 is pretty damn strong and my, in my opinion, it does do a fair amount of damage in a down tier and 6.7 whilst is it is probably going to kill it as a uh, as a plane it's probably going to take it out of the meta well it's better for this one plane to sort of suffer than for everything around it to revolve around Spitfire Mark 22. We saw that in another plane that we're going to be talking about that is the Sagittario 2. I'm actually going to jump up to it it's going from 8.0 to 8.3 and 8.3 is a good spot for it and I think at this point, provided that they don't destroy it via repair costs, keep the numbers of players coming through with the Sagittario 2, you will probably see this thing potentially go up to 8.7, uh, although I do think 8.3 is a nice spot for it. Now, it takes it away from those 7.0s and gives it sort of to those 9.3s. It is perfectly capable in this sort of situ situation. It is very much a plane that is uh, a light fighter. If you will, it is kind of like the G91 was back in the day, where it was just surprisingly deadly if you found yourself with your pants down uh, around the Sagittario 2. 
This plane is extremely nimble and is extremely deadly in a one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, it does tend to suffer a little bit with that ammunition or that sort of lack of ammunition, but a skilled pilot will make that through to about three or four kills, and three or four kills is more than enough to sway the tide of a battle, especially in the early to mid games. So, Sagittaria 2 8.3, that's actually a very, very nice change. Another very nice change that we're going to be talking about is the LA-200 now. The LA-200 is a bit of a bus, and it is because of that, it is going down from 8.0 to 7.7. .7. Well, I actually don't know if it's specifically because it's a bus, but the LA-200 is one of those planes that is very tough to fly. It is not an easy plane at all. It has a fairly large silhouette. It is fat, and of course, it has three 37mm cannons. It doesn't have super fast firing auto cannons, and it doesn't have a whole heap of ammunition to blow. So the LA-200, as a result, is not a very competitive plane to fly. 7.7 .7 should be okay for it. It does top out at, I think, 1050 or somewhere around 1,000 kilometers an hour. Uh, but the F-84G should keep that in check quite nicely. I think the LA-200 and F-84G are very similar, and therefore 7.7 .7 is a good spot for both of them. So let's move on to some of the changes that I find a little bit uh, questionable. Q5s. Both of them, Q5A and Q5 Early, MiG-21 F-13 and MiG-21 PFM all going down in battle ratings. So the MiG-21 PFM and the, uh, MiG-21 F are going to be at 9.3, the Q5 is going to 9.3, all these from 9.7, and the Q5 Early is going down all the way to 9.0. Now, for me, these are very, very questionable changes. The Let's, let's start with the MiG-21s, because the MiG-21s are early, they have basically R3Ss, which are 9Bs essentially, but a little bit worse. Uh, they have limited ammunition, and they are kind of tough to fly in a in a certain sort of uh, sense of the word. The MiG-21s are good planes. They just have a steep learning curve, and the fact that they have a steep learning curve, and uh, especially with the PFM, are accessible by the marketplace, which means that you're going to be people going to be uh, coming across MiG-21 PFM pilots that are fairly inexperienced. You may see in the introduction uh, sort of what I'm talking about, um, but um, the MiG-21 PFM, is it, it's capable. It is very capable at 9.7. Even in a sort of semi-up tier to 10.3, it is extremely capable. This plane tops out at 1250, I believe, at sea level, and has extremely high AOA, which means that it can one-circle dogfight most planes at its tier, with the exception of, uh, I don't know, something super, super maneuverable, something super light. Um, maybe the Venom. Maybe it just can't one-turn the Venom. But you can potentially, if you play your cards correctly, sit on the ass of something like a Sabre. Uh, you can do it with a Hunter. You can do it with an F-100, provided that you work your plane properly. And the MiG-21 PFM just has to be used correctly, and it's clear that the average player is not using this correctly. The plane itself is extremely abusable, and for me, having a plane that is abusable at a low battle rating is not a good thing. We saw this with the MiG-19s, and now the MiG-19s basically dominate everything from 9.7 all the way to 8.7. You can see this with a couple of other planes that are sort of down-tiered in order just because they're not doing particularly well. And this is going to be a bit of a theme of this particular video. So, MiG-21 PFM and MiG-21F are going down to 9.3. Honestly, to me, these are the things that these are going to be facing. At 9.3, you can potentially have an 8.3 down tier, meaning that you can face things like the Sea Vixen, which is not too bad, actually. Sea Vixen's not too bad. That could probably go up to 8.7, but I'll, I'll uh, leave that one there. That's not too bad. That could be, could be worse. It could be the F9, F8. Um, that's pretty much worse. I think that that is a really, really crappy change. Can you imagine being in an F9, F8, uh, having a top speed of about a thousand kilometers per hour, and this thing that goes 1250 and can sit on your ass, sits behind you all day, every day, and just blasts you with 23 mils, or if you're in the F13, the NR30, which is perfectly capable, it just requires a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice. For me, one of the things that I have noticed over time is everyone is just so caught up in the new shiny stuff, like, oh, new Harrier GR1 with SRAMs, oh, new this, oh, new that, that they forget to sit back and actually master the planes that have been in the game for a little while. And for me, this is why I see planes that are tough to fly, planes that have a high skill ceiling go down in battle rating. This, for me, is a tragic change because it now lowers this plane below things like the English Electric Lightning. Now, I think the MiG-21 PFM F-13 and, of course, the English Electric Lightning are very, very close in performance to each other. The only difference, of course, being that the 
Lightning is slightly more powerful in terms of its engine uh, and has better missiles. However, the PFM has a lot better maneuverability and is, in my opinion, a little bit more on the versatile side, being able to dogfight those sort of slower type jets, whereas the English Electric Lightning loses its ability to turn quite quickly. So these planes at 9.7, highly similar, yet they're going down because one of them is played a little bit more and therefore Gaijin has the statistics to determine that this plane is not as good as the others. But at the same time, doesn't really take into consideration the other planes that are just as tough to fly. For me, I really hate this and I hate the way that Gaijin goes about this, seeing this sort of just the numbers. They have a look at their numbers and they have a look at the planes that are being played the most and they just sort of fix their flavor of the month planes. They don't actually take a look at the whole matchmaker in its entirety. Now, one of the other planes that sits at 8.3 are some of the Sabres. The Sabres used to fight things like the uh, MiG-19s and that was pretty tragic. Uh, well, back in the day where the MiG-19 was, was still powerful. Oh wait, never mind. It still is powerful. For me, this is the problem. We're sort of starting to cram all of these jets just further and further down in battle rating as we're adding new stuff on top of it. And for me, this is where the tragedy really kicks in. It's one of those things that you, you actually see a tightening of these battle ratings, a squeeze, where these planes that were originally at a higher battle rating and introduced at a higher battle rating are being squeezed, not because of the planes that are below them, but because of the planes on top. And Again, we'll get to that. This theme will sort of start running through this video. So MiG-21 PFM is actually perfectly capable and putting it against 8.3s I think is a travesty. Uh, personally, I think that it is unacceptable because these planes just have so much of a performance difference and are just as abusable for someone that knows even half of what they're doing. For me, the PFM is very strong, the F-13 is very capable, and the Q-5A, whilst being a turd, has plenty of engine power to back it up, as well as an air spawn. Not only that, the Q5A and the Q5 earlier are all both attackers, so attacker aircraft are those types of planes that really shouldn't be doing that well against fighters anyway. These are the types of things that are not built to withstand a, uh, an engagement with a fighter. You think about other planes that are in the attacker class at this sort of jet tier, like uh, the IL-28, I guess it's a jet bomber or a strike fighter or something along those lines, the Su-7. These planes are, compared to their sort of planes that they should be going up against, uh, they're turds, and as a result, Gaijin just puts them at a lower battle rating, making them good fighters, but for a battle rating that they shouldn't be at. That, for me, is the real problem. The Q5A and the Q5 early should be a little bit higher. They should be at their 9.7 or 9.3 battle ratings, and because of their high top speed and their air start, it's going to make them really deadly, and for no very good reason at all. That is at least to those that can actually take the time and use those planes and learn them. So, moving on, we have the F8U2 going from 10.0 to 10.3. Now, I haven't played the F8U2 since it was given its uh, sort of buff with the AIM-9Ds being a little bit better at tracking. But um, honestly, I'll have to wait and see how this change goes through. I don't really know. I don't really know how I feel about this change. Uh, but I do know how I feel about the Hunter F6. Personally, I think it was fine at 10.0. Like, call me whatever you want, but I think that the Hunter F6 was an okay 10.0. Uh, the plane itself was pretty good. It just lacked a lot of engine power and lacked a bit of turning. So if you were caught off guard, it was pretty pretty nasty on your end. Um, but if, for example, you were on the offensive and you just stayed playing sort of super passive, picking off planes with your SRAMs, uh, then I think the plane itself is uh, is is pretty good. That's how you should be playing it, but of course, it doesn't always work that way. You end up with people getting up onto your ass, and then you end up with a situation that you just can't deal with. I remember when this thing was initially introduced, I actually didn't like it, because there were so many F-100s sitting around, and the F-100 can literally do whatever it wants with a Hunter F-6, as long as it doesn't overshoot. And the Hunter F-6, it doesn't matter what they do, the F-100D will always always be able to sit behind it and for me when I originally played the Hunter F6 it made me tear my hair out it was ridiculously frustrating to come up against for me that is where I see the biggest issue the Hunter F6 is a platform with good missiles so is it the platform itself that is causing it to go up to 10.3 or is it the missiles and if it's the missiles then why isn't the Jaguar going up with it because the Jaguar is essentially the same thing with a couple of trade-offs uh, for example the climb rate is a lot better on the um, uh, not the Jaguar, sorry, the uh, Harriers, my mistake. The Harriers are 
the, the GR1 specifically should be a 10.3 along with the Hunter F6 if the reason why this plane is going up in battle rating is because it is just a lot more capable because it has capable missiles. Alternatively, the reason why the Hunter F6 could be going up in battle rating is because it got two SRAMs at stock and therefore that has bumped up the statistics and has altered the statistics. I genuinely think that that could potentially be the reason why it is going to 10.3 because it got two SRAMs. To me, that sounds like really poor balance and that just seems like it's really poorly thought out. It's like, oh yeah, it's got an extra two SRAMs, therefore its competitiveness from stock has gone up. Uh, therefore, it's worthy of a higher battle rating. To me, I think that's total bullshit. I think the the way that something should be balanced is from its spaded performance, not from its stock performance. Um, and taking the statistics into account here is just taking the stock performance as well, which for me is a little bit stupid. But moving on, we are going to have a look at the real ones that are just, in my opinion, total stupidity. F4F early. That is the event F4 Phantom is going from 10.7 down to 10.3. This is essentially an F4F, as in an F4E with wing slats or with, I don't know, it's, it's a bit lighter, I think. Uh, but it certainly turns quite well. Uh, has AIM-9Js, has all of the bells and whistles except for flares and except for AIM-7Es. This is essentially 9Js on a top tier Phantom at 10.3. If you took the sparrows and the flares off your F4E in the American tech tree or the F4EJ in the Japanese tech tree, Gaijin believes that that is a 10.3 plane. To me, that's just fucking stupid. Like, how stupid is this? And the reason why is probably because two things. It's an event plane. People spammed it out, people bought it, people don't know how to play top tier jets. It is a phantom facing phantoms. People climbed in this thing and got shredded by AIM-7s. On top of that, this plane came stock. So you're having stock issues in this plane. And of course, finally, the, pl the other planes around it at 11.0 have all the other bells and whistles. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add another point on the end there. This particular plane is below the top BR. On top of that, we have the MiG-21 SMT and the MiG-21 MF, which are in a similar situation, going to the same battle rating of 10.3. For me, this is utter stupidity. Like, this could not be more stupid than anything I could have imagined. These planes are one below top, so they are always going to get up-tiered to 11.0. They are always going to face at least 11.0 to 10 to that sorry uh, yeah 11.0 to 10.0 and so you are not going to have the same bells and whistles that the 11.0s are going to have which are going to be the top dogs they're they're always going to get down to so they're always going to face these things at the very minimum and so of course they're going to get thrashed because they're facing planes that are better than them so this is an extremely poor excuse to put these planes down, because now they're going to be facing 9.3s, which is going to further compress the battle ratings and the, the sort of lower downs. It's completely and utterly stupid. These planes are perfectly capable 10.7s, because 10.7 is not a capable BR. 11.0 is the capable BR, and then 9.7, and then 8.3, and then so on and so forth. That's the way that battle ratings work, and Gaijin still haven't gotten this after, what, eight years? For me, how do you go and miss this? It's like they just don't understand how their own game works. These are the, the meta battle ratings, and the meta battle, meta battle ratings are shitting on the non-meta battle ratings. And Gaijin sees this as a statistical anomaly and decides to down-tier the MiG-21 MF, the MiG-21 SMT, and the F4F early. For me, these are just mindless and and just oh ridiculously stupid. How, how, how? It just blows my mind at how stupid this is. The way Gaijin handles battle ratings in general is via a statistical analysis. They take a bunch of planes that have been played fairly regularly, so they have a decent sample size. And at least, at least they do that. They take a good sample size. Then off that, they use this sample size or this, this data to understand which planes have been performing better. And then once they do that, 
they adjust the battle ratings so that roughly all planes perform at let's say between 45 and 55 percent win rate with a between 2 and 0.5 kd let's let's just say that as a as a general thing I, I i'm sure it's something similar to that but we don't really know so we can only guess for me the reason why this sucks is because of the following one you're taking stock planes into account you're not taking just spaded planes and therefore when people eventually go to spade their planes and make them better then they're going to get a much greater performance boost out of that battle rating than they otherwise would have when they were stock and uh, sort of uh, influencing the statistics Num number two statistics do not tell the whole story when you're looking at stats they may look pretty impressive and they may look pretty extensive but do they actually tell you everything about that plane do they actually tell you that if you do this you are going to get a good result not always and that's because there's this thing called real life real life or when something is applied from theory to practice you get this thing called error and you get this sort of natural thing that occurs in just about everything that you come across I see it every day in life, at work, and I'm sure if you're an engineer or an organic chemist or anyone that works in industry or production or anything, you will get some sort of error. And that error is not accountable for in the statistics because you have impurities in your metal or you have um, instability in your electricity grid or things like that that, that warp your theory and make it a little bit off in practice and what Gaijin has done here is they have failed to take into account that little bit of impurity and that little bit of impurity is the difference in skill and the difference in stock and spaded for me this is where Gaijin make their biggest failure this is where a balancing team that sit down every single day and curate the battle rating and the matchmaker and the shell types that planes get uh, and and tanks as well and the missiles and the avionics and just balances them accordingly this is what would benefit so much from having one or two extra members to gaijin staff and this for me is where gaijin falls the most ladies and gentlemen if i had my way again I guess a lot of people will say that if, if I had my way, the world would be a different place. But um, realistically, it's not really going to happen that way. The only thing that I can advocate for is for you guys to make your voice heard and for you guys to, to inform Gaijin of these mistakes. Because they are mistakes. I think these are sort of silly errors, silly things that could have been avoided because the Gaijin didn't take a long enough look at their balance algorithm. They've just sort of click punch the numbers in and uh, here we go here are our new battle ratings according to computer for me you need to have a look at this with a bit more of a sort of holistic view because your numbers don't tell the whole story I've said it time and time again it's just not the best way to do things because you you can see it you can see it applying in many parts of life you just think about it think about where you've punched in some numbers and where it's come up short or it's come out long because it's just there's there's different things that happen in the world and these things influence or don't aren't shown well enough by statistics ladies and gentlemen i implore you guys to have a chat on the forums and uh, voice your opinion for me this is really frustrating and i really don't want to see a lot of these changes go through particularly the mig 21 mf the mig 21 smt and the f4f early i think these planes at 9.3 would cause way more damage than having them at nine point at ten point seven, and uh, keeping them sort of not useless, but the underdogs. And for me, having them as the underdogs is not a bad thing. You need ten point three support aircraft. One of the final points that I want to make as well is that having a variety of planes at a variety of battle ratings is extremely important. Having planes that are all at similar battle ratings is detrimental to the overall matchmaker. When you expand into a new battle rating, you have to take some sort of cannon fodder with you. With the 10.7s going down to 10.3, you're ruining the diversity of the matchmaker and therefore compressing battles so that they are only 
10.3 uh, to 9.3. And then because the 10.3s get shit on, no one plays 10.0. And because no one's playing 10.0, your, your 9.0s are going to have a little bit of a harder time finding a matchmaker. This is the type of stuff I'm talking about. Having a variety of battle ratings that have plenty of vehicles is extremely important. And that's why when I released my video on my suggested battle ratings for 11.0, it's it had such a sort of wide variety and why a couple of planes in those battle ratings were a little bit worse off simply because in order to keep that nice variety you had to make a few sacrifices and I think sacrificing planes like the MF, SMT, F4F early even Mirage 3C, J35 Draken which for some odd fucking reason doesn't get down to its 10.3 it despite it being basically the same thing as the 21 SMT, MF, and F4 FO. For me, the way Gaijin does things is utterly baffling. But all we can hope for is to make our voices heard on the forums, on Reddit, in the YouTube comment sections, and hopefully we can get some change. So ladies and gents, that is my battle rating video for July 2021. These battle ratings are like the usual ones, not particularly amazing. There are some, of course, great changes, and of course, it is always worth striving for perfection with these battle rating changes. So without further ado, I'd just like to thank everyone for watching. I'd like to thank everyone for supporting the channel because to me that is extremely important and is extremely powerful because without that, I wouldn't have the face cam. I wouldn't have the nice computer to do all my editing on. So thank you very much for sort of giving me that privilege to work with such incredible pieces of equipment and it sort of have a chat to you guys almost face to face. So for me, it's a real great step and hopefully you'll be able to see some face cam live stream soon. Um, and of course, more content with this lovely webcam. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate your time. Take care and I'll catch you next time.